Okay, done. So let's start. Okay, listen to me. So as we agreed, guys, in, in, in this course, um, I made it. Should be okay. Okay. Anyway, I made I made it very clear in this course that we are gonna use three basic operations. So uh, inverter or not not gate, and gate, and also or gate. Any logic set, these are the basic operation we are gonna use to predict any basic any any logic set. We are doing that, okay? And you know how how they work. You know the two table of, of, of each one of these. So today I'm gonna teach four more gates. Okay, this gate, these gates. What I'm gonna teach today. Number one, you need a, similar to what I did here. You need to know the two table how they work. Okay, and these gates are created are created from these basic operations. Also. You should understand why why these gates are not enough. Why you are gonna use another gate? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you all tips. So let's start. So the gates I'm gonna explain. Nand, okay, nor, and also XOR or exclusive exclusive OR and XNOR or exclusive NOR. Okay, so let's take one by one. So let's start with the first one, NAND. Okay, what is the symbol? How it looks like? Okay, it's exactly similar to N, exactly similar to N, but we have a bubble here. And I took, I, I, this is always we do that. If you can find, if you see a bubble, either at the end or at the output, or sometimes you, sometimes you put bubble at the input here. So every time you see a bubble, this bubble means inverter. Okay. So anyway, so so this is how the gate looks like. Okay, so this is A and B, two inputs A and B. So what symbol? You know, in case of inverter, we use prime. In case of end, we use plus. Uh, sorry, or we use plus. In case of end, sometimes we don't put anything, or sometimes you put about this way. Okay. So in case of end, what symbol we are going to use here? Okay, we are not going to use new symbol. So what we are going to do is A and B. Everything is inverted. Okay. So why you use this way? Simply because this gate, this gate actually is end, normal end, and followed by inverter. So if you have AB here, so this one AB and this one AB inverter. Okay, so this gate is called NAND. So it, this end from not, so not end, end and followed by by inverter. Okay, use it as, as a gate. Okay. So you can see here, we can use the basic operation to create this gate, okay? But we can use it as a, as a gate, okay? So number one, tell me what is the truth table of this one, how it works, okay? I just want to make it easy. The truth, truth table of this one will be similar to, to the truth table of end, but you are gonna invert the output, that's it, okay? So, so actually, to make, it, to make it easy, the truth table is if at least one input is zero, okay, at least one input is zero, and and if you zero, inverter make it one. So in order to get one, at least one input should be zero. Okay. The only way to get zero here is actually when all inputs are ones. So when all inputs are ones. And if you want, inverter make it zero. Is that okay? This is how the truth table of this one. Um, also, this gate, it can, it can have two inputs, or it, it, sometimes it can have more than two inputs. So sometimes you can make it three inputs. So exactly everything is the same. So it's gonna be A and B and C inverted, okay? Any questions here? Yes, sure. Zero, yeah, this is the only case when all the inputs are ones. The only case I am gonna get zero at the output. Okay, and then it's basically all one unless there's uh, all the other. 
Yeah, this is the only case when only puts are arise. Any other case, it is zero. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, the only case that can I think can give zero here is actually when only puts are arise. Okay. Any other case, uh, case I'm going to get one. Okay. So, so this is named. This is how it works. This is the symbol. Uh, this is how 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 I'm going to represent it using va uh, variables. Uh, so now the question is. Um, uh, okay, let me let me finish your and then I'm, I'm gonna explain why we need new gates. Why why we just we don't just use a basic operation? I'm gonna tell you, but, but let, let's finish. Nor, nor, nor is exactly everything is the same, but instead of instead of using and, I'm gonna use or. Okay, so this is how it looks like you have here. Or, and then we have inverter here. Okay, so if you have here A, B, so this output should be A or B, everything is inverted. This is how, how we write it A or B inverted. So this is nor. Okay, again, I, you can you can guess the truth table from or because the truth table here will be similar to or, but you are going to invert or you need to invert the output. Okay. Uh, so here in this case, the truth table actually has two cases. One case when at least one input is one. Okay, if when at least one input is one, okay, so actually the output here becomes zero. Why? Because if one input is one, or if me one, inverter make it zero. Okay. One more thing here: if all inputs are zeros, if all inputs are zeros. We are going to get here one, and this is the only case we can get one here when all inputs are zeros. Okay. Also, you can have here two inputs, or you also you can have more than two inputs. If everything is the same, it works the same way. So this case is going to be A, A or B or C. Everything is inverted. Any questions? Okay. Now. Uh, it's a very, very important question. Why we need new gates? You told us it's enough to have end, enough to have or, it's enough to have inverter to create everything. So now, why you are creating a new gate? And this new gate is already created for what I have. So why do you want? Okay, I'm going to tell you why. Simply because, remember, everything we have here has to be implemented by electronics, okay? So usually, usually, it's easier our in electronics to create NAND than creating uh, AND or OR, okay? It's easier. For example, in the coming lab, you have a very simple circuit. You have, I know you may, you, may not, you may not understand how it works, but, but uh, which is totally fine. So this is NAND, it may be, it's easy to create NAND, okay? So you have two transistors here. I can uh, quickly explain, I already explained in the tutorial video of the lecture, but I can explain it again here. Very simple, as I told you before, this is a transistor. This transistor, if the input, if the input is zero, so it is off, off means open circuit. And if the input is one, which is five volt, so actually it becomes short circuit. So transistor is like a switch. Okay, uh, open circuit or short circuit. You can see here, you can, can you prove this is NAND? Yes, I can. Okay, you can see here, if uh, if one input, if one input is A or B, of at least one input is zero, so at least one transistor is gonna become off. So there is no bad for the current, the current cannot go here. There is no bad because one of them becomes off. If at least one input is zero, and because there is no current, the voltage I'm going to get here, I'm going to get five volts here. You got what I'm saying? So is it, there's a very, very little current here, almost zero, so I'm going to get five volts here. Okay? But the only way to get zero volt here is actually when this one is five volt and this one is five volt, to make it like short circuit. It becomes like you have here five volt and then short circuit to the ground. So now you can get zero volt. Anyway, so you got this on these details. So what, what? So again, number one, number one. I, I, 
I, I want to answer the question why you, we are teaching NAND. Why it is not enough to just use AND and inverter, okay? Why, why you teach NAND? Again, there are actually two main reasons. In electronics, it's manufacture, or the people who manufacture the chips, it's more efficient, it's easier to, to create NAND than creating AND or OR. Or. This is number one. Number two, which is very, very important thing, as I'm gonna explain in the comment section, we can any function. So here that's what I'm gonna explain. Any function can be implemented using NAND or NOR. Only. So that's what I'm going to explain in the next section. So in the next section, I'm going to explain to you how any function I can implement this function. Any function. So for example, f equal x or y z or x y z. Any 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 function. So any function. There is some way to implement this function using NAND only or NOR only. Okay. And that's actually usually what we do. Usually what we do. The whole circuit is implemented using only NAND. Okay, and again, uh, this is something related to electronics. The people of manufacturing, they like something like that. It's like you have the same circuit, NAND, only NAND, and then you, you just repeat it. So I think in manufacturing, it's easier to do that. Okay, so this is uh, how usually we do it using NAND only. We can implement any function using no only, can, you can implement it. I think in the data sheet, Sometimes if you have logic circuit, the data sheet, they tell you we created it using NAND or NOR and so on. Any questions? Okay. So this is regarding NAND and NOR. Okay. Now we have two, two other ones, ex exclusive OR and exclusive NOR. So why why you need them? That's what I'm gonna explain. So here we have exclusive. Or and we have exclusive or okay, that's what exclusive no. These are two, two more gates. Okay, uh, so first of all, what is the symbol for this one? Symbol of this one is like or, but we we put like a curve here this way. Okay, so this is how the, this is a new symbol. Okay, so here if you have a b. So here I'm gonna say a x exclusive or b. Look at the new symbol here. Circle and then plus beside it. So this means it is exclusive or. So I'm gonna, this so this is like an operation, like and like but here it's called exclusive or. Okay, guys. So exclusive or a or b. Uh, sorry, exclusive or b. Actually, it is a b prime or B prime A. So again, I can implement this gate using the three basic operations. Okay. So actually here, A exclusive B is actually A B prime or B prime A. Okay. So now the question is, okay, so what's new here? Why why we need it? Why we need something like that? And you you call it a new gate and so on. I'm telling you why. Okay. Look at the two staple of this one. So here, if you have A, B, and then A is exclusive for B, okay? So if, if you just apply this one here, A, B prime, or B prime, A, A, okay? So what you will find, so 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, you will find here, when the two inputs are equal, they are the same, you are gonna get zero. But when the two inputs are different, zero, one, or one, zero, they are not the same, I get one. This is how it works. That's why I can say this gate is like does not equal. So it's like this gate is gonna give you one when the two inputs are not equal. If you zero when the two inputs are equal, okay? So we can use this gate for something like that, to, to measure equality, to say if inputs are equal or not. But, but here, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get zero as you see here, 
with the two inputs are equal. They are, they are gonna give me one when the two inputs are non-equal, okay? Yes, I can measure for equality. There's another, okay, let me finish. Okay, and then I will take your question. There's another way to use this gate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain it, okay? But for now, it's this way, okay? So this gate, I can use it if I have two inputs and I wanna know if they are equal or not, okay? Let's look at the exclusive nor, okay? So again, this is or, this is nor. Nor here means not all. So you first look at the symbol, how it looks like. So the symbol is everything is the same, like it's a use of all. Look here, everything is the same, but I put inverter here. So we have it's a use of all, and this is how it works. We have it's a use of no, which is the same thing like this one, but it has inverter. But it has a, a different symbol. So this is the symbol here. Circuit and not inside it. So this means exclusive node. Okay. And as I told you before, every time you see you see a bubble like this one, it means this is inverter. Does that mean the output of this gate is similar to this one, but inverter? Inverted the answer is yes. So, so I can say A exclusive of node B is actually A exclusive of or B inverted. So that means this gate is similar to this gate, but there is inverter at the end here, okay? And then after that, if you take, so how can you implement it using the basic operation? Okay, very simple. So I can take, you know already exclusive of all is actually A D prime or D prime A, everything is inverted, okay? There is a derivation, derivation. I'm gonna shoot in the slides, but after after you simplify it and do algebra manipulation, the output is a b or a prime b prime. Very important to know this one here. Very important to know this one here. Again, if you have here two inputs, it's a use of all. So exclusive of all is equivalent to A B prime or B prime A. You need to know it, okay? Here, here, it's A B or A prime B prime. Okay. okay, what about the truth table? The truth table, because again, this gate is similar to this gate, but just we invert the output, okay? So the truth table will be similar, exactly same thing like this one here, but inverted, so it becomes one, zero, zero, one. That means this gate is like equal gate, okay? So this gate is gonna give me one when the two inputs are equal, okay? Because again, you can see this is not, this is just invert, inverted of this one, okay? So when the two inputs are equal, it's exclusive not give me one. If the two inputs are not equal, it's exclusive or gives me zero. Any questions? So number one, number one, you need to know the symbol of exclusive of all. You need to know this symbol here, how we use it, okay? You need to know the equivalent one, E B prime or B prime A. You need to know the truth table of it, okay? To make the truth table easy, you don't need to apply, you don't, you don't need to apply this formula or this expression. I, I make it easy. I told you in case of exclusive of all, if the two inputs equal, equal means zero, zero, or one, one, okay? So here you get zero, okay? If they are not equal, if you one. Here is the opposite. If the two inputs equal, you get one. If not equal, you get zero, okay? You need to know how this, this symbol, this is for exclusive node. You know, we use this symbol here, okay? And uh, this one is actually the inversion of this one. So if you invert this one, the formula becomes, a B or A prime B prime. And the way this one works is, is actually this one gives me one when when the two inputs uh, are equal, gives gives you zero when the two inputs are not equal. Okay. Again, so these two gates, how can we use them? Number one, we can use them if you want in case of you want them, if you want to see if the inputs equal or not, as this is straightforward, similar to what I explained here. Okay. It has another Another use, I'm gonna tell you, 
Uh, there may be other things, but at least the, uh, this one we are going to use it here. There is another use. The other use is look here, for example, in case of the use of all, which is this one here. Okay. I can say, I already look here at how I explain the truth table, guys. So, in order to get this truth table, you, 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 you can apply this, this formula. Okay, so you can you can you can calculate this one, you can calculate this one, and then take all you will get this one here, this one way. There is another easier way. I already explained if the two cables equal, you get zero, output is zero. If the two cables are different, output is one. Okay, there is another way to express this two table. Okay, let's let's what is this? The other way is if if one input is one and the other input is x, whatever x is zero or one, okay, the output actually is x prime. If one input, if one input is zero and the other input is x, I'm gonna get zero. That's why I'm gonna get x. Okay, is that true? Let's see. Let's see. If one input here, let look here in these two cases. If one input is one, okay, the output is actually the inversion of the second input. Yeah, as you see here. So when one input is one, the other input is zero, I got one, okay? One input is one, the other input is one, I got zero, okay? When, when the input is zero, one input is zero, so the output equal to the other input, yes. Okay? But why this is important? I'm gonna tell you why this is important, okay? As, as I'm gonna teach later in this course, uh, as I'm gonna teach later in this course, as you know, as I already explained in chapter one, subtraction A minus B is actually equivalent to A plus uh, B prime plus one. Is that right? Because negative B means the two scoring. And the two scoring is one, one, one scoring plus one. Is that okay? That's why one way to use this uh, property we have here is uh, I have an other, I have other here that can do addition. Here I'm going to input B. For example, here we have B2. I'm going to input here B1. I'm going to input B0. I'm assuming I'm going to add three good numbers. So I have here three. B0, B1, B2. And then I have here E0, E1, E2. Okay, so let me make this one. So here we have E2, E1, E0. Okay, so here, and this is can be other or can be subtractor. So it can, and that's what I told you. This is one of the uh, attractive things in, uh, in two common. This is the way we use two common because the same hardware, I can use it for other and subtractor. Okay. So what happens here is that I can input A, okay? But for B, I can, I'm gonna put here exclusive over, okay? So here I'm gonna input exclusive over. There may be other, other ways to use it, but at least that's how, how uh, the straightforward way or this is how, how we use it, okay? Yeah. So here, in exclusive over here, I'm gonna connect one input here to B, B2, B1, B0, and then I'm gonna connect the other input together. Okay, and uh, again, if you don't understand it well, that's what I'm gonna explain in this course in, in chapter four, don't worry. So, there's an interesting part. If I input here zero, if the input here is zero, and because this is exclusive four, and you know how exclusive four works, if one input is zero, I'm gonna get the same X. But if one, one input is one, I'm gonna flip this one. Okay, anyway. So because one input is zero, so what I'm gonna get here, B2, I'm gonna get here B1, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get here, sorry, B2, uh, B1, B0, okay? And in this case, uh, this circuit works what is addition. It can do addition because the input here is actually A and B, and then just you add them together. However, if I make here one, so actually I'm gonna input here the component of this one. And this one will input here as a can. In this case, as I'm going to explain later, 
I can do some interaction. Okay, but anyway, just make it simple. So here, sometimes, like in this scenario, sometimes, if I have here zero and x, I'm gonna hit x, and that's exactly what I need in case, in case I, if I wanna use this simple for addition, so I just put here zero, so these gates are gonna hit me b, 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 okay? Sometimes I need, I need the inversion. X, then I'm gonna hit x prime, the inversion, especially in this case, okay? Anyway, there, there may be other, 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 other uses of this gate, but at least, I explain two, two, two ways to use it. One way, just to check if, if the inputs are equal or not, I can use the exclusive nor or exclusive or. This is one way to use it. Second way, sometimes uh, I have a control, I want to control here, okay, by using zero or one. Either I get the same input or I get the inversion of this input, okay? And we'll apply this idea here. We'll apply here so that the same circuit can be used for addition and subtraction just by changing this control here, control input. Yes, I'm sorry, so what's your question? I just tried to finish the thing before I take your question. Can you go back to the previous slide on the, um, on the formula for OR? Yes. Or, sorry, uh, exclusive OR? Yeah, this formula here, yeah. A, B prime, A and B prime, or B prime and A. Yes. Isn't that the same thing? So is it again E B prime or B prime A? Isn't that hard? Isn't A and B prime equivalent to B prime and A? Yeah. So it could be reduced to just. I'm a. sorry. I'm sorry. This is my fault. I'm really sorry. So actually, I'm sorry. This this is E prime B. I'm sorry. Okay. So here E B prime or E prime B. Okay. I'm sorry for this one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write it again. So actually E. The circulus of all B, yes, you are right. If it is A times, if it is A, B prime, or A, B prime, they are equal, right? So this one is equal to this one. So it should be A, B prime. So there's no need to be, I'm really sorry. So anyway, so I'm going to write it again. So actually here, A, B prime, or A prime B. Okay. And for the other one, A or B is actually a B or A prime B prime. So here, one term doesn't have any inversion. The other term has the two inversions here, okay? Here, one term without inversion, the other one with inversion. And then here I switch it. So the first one with inversion, the second one without. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Just, just it's a slice, it's correct. Yes. So in this case, there are going to inputs. Yeah, that's a very good question. Yes, usually when I use this gate, I have a slide, I'm gonna talk about this part here. So yeah, usually when you use this list, usually we use it with, with two inputs. I don't I don't see any, I, I don't remember any case that we need more than one input. But if for some reason, if you have three inputs here this, this way, okay? So actually it means you have to do it in two steps. And there is no, it's, this is some help. I, I want you to understand this part. This amount help, help some help. Different from end, end, or no. In case of end, there is an easy way. If you have too many inputs, there is an easy way to calculate the output. As I told you, if just one input is zero, output is one. There is an easy way. Okay. Here there is no easy way. So you have to do it in two steps. That's what I mean. So you have to do, for example, if you have a two step like this one here, I have to I have to do this one first and then do the second one. I have to do this one. But again. I just put this one this way because I thought it's the biggest book, but I really don't remember any use for something like that. Okay, or, or if I wanna, let me put it in a different way. If I wanna do something like something like that here, okay, for some reason, I can express it like this one. Okay, but you have to do it in two steps. Okay? By the way, it's the same thing for end. So for end, for example, if you have three input end, so actually this one is, you can do it in two steps. Okay, but but when you calculate the two step way, you don't need you don't need to do the two steps this way. You can just easy teach, but this this is there is no an easy way to do it. You have to do uh, two, these two first, and then the uh, exclusive support here, and then another exclusive support. Okay, but this is a very good question. Usually, end uh, no uh, end or name nor. Okay, we 
can use it with, with two inputs or more. But usually for XOR and XDOR, usually it's for two inputs, usually. Okay. Any questions? Okay, let me go through the slide to see if I get uh, or missing something here. So here, this is name, this is symbol of name, that's what I said. This is a, a true stable in case of two inputs. Okay, this is a true stable in case of three inputs. It's the same thing as I told you to make it easy. Very simple. Just if I find one input is zero, okay, I don't need to look at the other inputs. Outputs are ones. Okay, right away. Okay. Now here I found two zeros to two ones. Okay. Here I find one zero, one. Okay. The only way to get zero when the three inputs are ones. Okay. Again, this is known. Uh, this is the symbol. We are using here this is a true stable, so it's exactly the same thing as, as I said. You have to look for ones here. So, here you have ones, so I don't need to look at the other outputs here. Outputs are zeros, okay? Here you have ones, outputs are zeros. Here I have one here, output is zero. The only way to get one here is when all inputs are zeros, okay? I just I, I make it easy. Easy for you to memorize it, okay? It's similar to or, but you need to invert the output, okay? Because if you look, if you look to or, you can find this. This one is actually zero, and everything is ones, okay? It's inverted. Yeah, this is exclusive use of or, and exclusive use of nor. This is the symbol for exclusive use of or. This is symbol for exclusive use of nor. And this is the symbol here, and this is the symbol here. You can see they are exactly the same thing, but we won't invert that here. We invert the output. That's why this is the relation between them. So, exclusive of OR is actually the inversion of exclusive of OR. Okay. And as I told you, uh, exclusive of OR, so it gives you one when they are not equal. Here, this one gives you ones when they are equal. Okay. So, I can say this is a beautiful equivalent. So, I can this here, one of them gives you one when the two inputs are not equal. The other one gives you one when the two inputs are equal. Okay? And later in this course, we will measure it, we will use it this way. Okay, for example, just maybe too early to do signal it, but that's okay. Just to, to get some idea how we can use something like that. Okay. If you have any number, like for example, A0, A1, A2, B0, B1, B2. So here you have two num uh, two numbers. Uh, this is a three-bit number and another three-bit number. I want to check. I want to check if these two numbers are equal or not. So now I want to create a circuit. This circuit has A and it has B. Every one of them is three bits. And then I want to output one when they are equal. Okay? If they are not equal, I'm going to output zero. Okay? So I want to make a circuit that so gives me one when the two numbers are equal. Okay? Very simple. So actually, these two numbers are equal if, if every two bits are equal. Make sense? Two, two binary numbers are equal if every bit, every two bits are equal. Okay? That's why, very simple, I can do here a superlusive four. I can do a superlusive four, and then I can do a superlusive four. Okay? Or, or I can do a superlusive no. Okay? Whatever I want. So I can, I'm going to show you what I mean here. A superlusive no. It's of it's of okay, so actually, this one will give me one, this one will give me one, this one if they are equal. So, if, if, if this bit is equal to this bit, give me one. So, then I can put end after this. So, that this end will give me one when, when it's, this x no give me one, give me one, give me one. So, the only way to get one here when all inputs are ones, which means this bit is equal to this bit, this bit equal to this bit, this bit is equal to this bit, which means these numbers are equals. You got what I'm saying? We can do it using a superuse of four if you want. A superuse of four, you can. But in this case, we have to we have to use name here. Okay. So that when the two when the, the, they are equal, I'm gonna hit zeros. I'm sorry, you have to use uh, you have to use no here. So look here, it's a use of four. So when they are equal, I'm gonna hit zero, zero, zero. Okay. And then when I use when I use no here, so this one gives me one. Anyway, so I, I'm gonna explain it later in details. Okay, but I just want to show you.
how we are getting the food. Okay. So anyway, this is this is the formula for to produce the four as you see here x y prime or x prime y. This is this is what I need to say. Okay. So here one without prime, the other one with prime. This one. Okay. Now if so collusive norm is actually the inversion of this one. So if I invert, if I invert this one, okay, I get the uh, 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 norm, and this is the output, the result. Two, the two inputs without inversion, the two inputs with inversion, okay? And this is a derivation. I told you I'm gonna show the derivation here from here to here, okay? Just, just let's do it as a practice for uh, algebra manipulation. So here, this is exclusive or I already know the formula for exclusive or. So this is the formula for exclusive or this year, okay? And now I'm gonna do inversion. Uh, uh, this is, I'm gonna use D Morgan. You remember D Morgan? When I use D Morgan, I have to flip the first term, as you see here. I have to invert the second term and then this or should become A, okay? So now it becomes like that here, using D, D Morgan. Now I can apply the work and again here. You have to invert the first one. You have to invert the second one. And in end should become or. Same thing here. Invert the first one. Invert the second uh, second uh, variable. And then uh, any uh, end becomes or. After that, I can do distribution. Yeah, I did distribution this way. After I did the distribution, so this one with this one, this one with this one, here, and then here. Anyway, so after I did distribution now, y, y prime is actually zero, x, x prime is actually zero, so now it becomes x, y, or x prime, y prime, okay? What you need to know, what you need to know, in case of exclusive form, this is a formula. In case of exclusive norm, this is a formula. X y or x y prime y prime. Okay. We have some uh, theorem here or uh, properties that I can use with exclusive form. Okay. Uh, the first one here, zero. That's what I told you. Zero exclusive or x. I'm gonna hit x. One one. I'm gonna make make inversion. I told you about this one. Also, x exclusive for x, I get zero. So if the two inputs are equal, because x x two inputs are equal, right? So I get zero. If the two x exclusive for x prime, in this case the two inputs are not equal. That's for sure. Because x and x prime. So this is one, this one is zero, this one is zero, this one is one. So it can't be equal. So in this case it is zero. Also, I can use a uh, commutative. So x exclusive for y is the same. Y is exclusive for X. Also, I can use uh, associative uh, law. So if you have here, I can, I want to do exclusive all to three variables. So if I take these two first, and then I do exclusive for this one, it's the same thing. If if I do this part first, okay. Also, we have here distribution, okay. So X and Y is exclusive or Z, so I can do distribution. Okay. Any question? So here, nothing is new. I just summarize. I make a summary for the case we, we have. So this is and or inverter. There is something we call it buffer. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna talk about it later. Uh, so here we have also named. Okay, the first table. If you need to know the first table of all of them. Uh, and then we have here norm, we have exclusive or exclusive norm. Here, uh, exclusive norm, it's called equivalence because this one gives you one when the two inputs are equal. That's all the case we have. Any questions? So, one more thing I want to show you here. Uh, I'm still proving that net bit is universal. So, what this means? Here, universal here means using net gate. I can make the three fundamental of the three basic operation we have. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how. This is, if you have here, look at this one first here. If you have named, if you have named, you get this way here, and then I tie the input together and A, so this one becomes like node gate. So if you tie the input together, 
okay? And this becomes like not it. So using name, I can make not easily, okay? Using name, I can make end easily. How, how you can make end easily, okay? So here, this is name, and then I put inverter after that. So this inverter is gonna cancel this inverter here. So it becomes, so this is inverter, okay? So it is like you have here name, and then I put inverter. So this inversion cancels this inversion. So then it becomes a, a end again. Okay. One more thing here, I can also make all. How can you make all using only an end? Okay. Look here. Uh, this is inverter and this is inverter. So this one becomes a prime and this one becomes to a b prime. So the output here should be a prime, b prime, and everything inverted because this is this is name. Okay. So if you use the Morgan, if you use the Morgan and see what, what this one is equivalent to, it becomes you need to invert the first one, or you need to invert the second one. So it becomes A or D. So, so again, make it simple. I'm gonna make it very simple. So if you have your name this way, and then I input here X prime, Y prime, okay, which same thing like what I explained to you, same thing like it's like you would invert that here. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to get x or y. x or y. Okay. By, by the way, sometimes I'm also maybe, so what I did here, but don't be confused. This one is inverter, okay, but using net. So sometimes we do this way, but uh, here, sometimes I can make inverter this way, okay, or I can make it this net, like, like what, what I did here. Okay. It's the same thing. Sometimes, because you may see, you may see that in the uh, box, sometimes we do, we do it in different ways. Sometimes we put a bubble here. Okay, we put a bubble here. So uh, this bubble, you may see a bubble here, it's inverter. Invert, so I can make it this way or this way, or I can do just put a bubble. Okay, so what I wanna, what, what I wanna tell you here, NAND, using NAND, I can create the three basic gates, okay? Also here, I want to tell you, using NOR, I can also create the three basic gates, okay? Again, if I tie the input together this way, so now NOR becomes NOT gate or inverter, okay? And here, this one, this one is NOR, and then if I put inverter after it, so this inverter will cancel this inverter, so it's, so no. This one will be exactly similar. You have all, and then I put inverter, and this part is, is, is null, and then I put another inverter, so this inverter cancels this inverter, okay? So again, yes, I can, uh, uh, so using null, I can I can make it all this way. But how can you make it end? How, how null can be end? Okay, as you see here, if you have here null, and then I put here inverter, X and Y to so give X prime Y prime again. If you are using, uh, if you are using the Morgan X prime Y prime, everything prime. Okay, apply apply the Morgan here. You invert the first one. Uh, um, I, no, sorry, this is wrong. This is I, I did I did end uh, not uh, not known. So X prime or Y prime. Yes. Because this is no. Again, you can apply the Morgan, so it becomes you invert the first one, you invert the second one, and end. So it becomes uh, becomes end. Okay. So let me let me make this too easy. This one here and this one. I'm gonna make the same easy. Look here, guys. Very simple. This is this is named. Okay, so if you have here A, B, I'm gonna get A, uh, A, uh, A, B prime, this is name, okay? But if I take names and I input here A prime, B prime, so now it becomes O. Okay? We can write it this way, or we can write it this way. I can put here inverter, inverter, input A and B. So now it becomes O. Okay. If you don't believe me, just, just to do algebra manipulation using the model. Okay. 
same thing for node. If you have node and you input here a prime, b prime, you will get a and b. Anyway, so the conclusion of this slide, guys, is um, uh, using named, I can create any other thing, and or uh, or an inverter or 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 not uh, uh, inverter. Same thing for you. Okay. Later, I'm I'm going to you will you will understand because this is I told you the reason we are going to use named is because I'm gonna I'm gonna show you later how any function can be implemented only using named or only using no. That means if I have good electronic circuit using NAND, I can implement any logic circuit only using NAND or only using no. Okay. Now I, I think from the left you're really familiar with what I'm gonna explain right now. You have logic chips, you already you already started to use these chips, okay? Um, in these chips, logic sync or, or uh, uh, they come in, in different families, family. Okay. Here in, in labs, we are we are we, we are using 74 family. 74. So 74 is a family, okay, as you see here. You have 74 zero, zero. you have four is zero four and so on. Okay. So so here, 74, 32, this one here, I'm not sure if you have this one in your kit. I think you have, but you know. So in this chip here, you have four, four, all gates. This is all, all, all gates, okay? And these all gates are seven. So I can use this one, or this one, or this one, or you can use all of them, but they are seven, okay? So everyone is alone, okay? If you have already used this one, 7404. This is the first family of 74. Okay. Um, 04, you have already used this one. So in, in this chip, this chip has uh, inverter, six inverters. We have also 7400. That's another chip here, as you see, 7400. So this one, as you see here, it, inside it, it has four NAND gates. We have zero two, so as you see here, it has four null gates. We have zero eight, which this one has uh, four end gates. We have eighty six. Okay, all of them are from the same family, seventy four. Okay, uh, and this one has a four exclusive or. This don't don't worry, this is a simple for exclusive or. So one more thing, very important. Sometimes I told you we have we have families, okay. Uh, usually we classify these families based on the technology that is used to create the electronic technology that is used to create create the circuits, okay. The gates. For example, we have here what we call a family of, uh, and you can read, you can find. Some of it, uh, okay. Uh, this is okay. This is related to electronics. So if you don't understand, that's okay. But uh, the, I think when you take electronic books, you will understand it better. But uh, you know, all all these things are created using transistors. Okay? So we have here uh, uh, one, one of the family TTL. Okay. So when you read the data sheet, you will, it's going to be written. We we manufacture this chip using TTL. For example, okay, this, so this is uh, a technology that can be used to create, uh, or uh, or this is actually the how how the electronic circuit uh, it's using uh, bipolar transistors. Anyway, so this one has been used for fifty years. I don't think it becomes very popular anymore. Uh, we have ECL technology. This maybe have high speed. I think we have CMOS. This is transistor, CMOS transistor. Anyway, so this is uh, this one is it's very famous. That our uh, this one is actually low consumption. It doesn't consume too much power. Okay, so that's why we like it, especially if you power if you power the device using batteries, small batteries. You want these batteries 
to last for a long time. So anyway, so just so they come now. I think this CMOS is very popular now. Anyway, uh, just in case when you read the data sheet of the chip you are using, if you see these names, you don't. You just you, this is a technology that used to create as a surface. Here also, I, I unless I have already explained many of this one, like fan out, or I think this one will be in the coming lab, so I, I can explain it quickly. So there is something we call it fan, fan in and fan out. So fan in means the number of input available in a gate. So if you have a gate, this gate, this gate has two inputs. So fan in is two. So this so if you read the data sheet and you find the fan in, fan in means how many inputs you have. Fan out, and, and that's what what, what, I'm what I explained in lab number three, fan out, if you have here one gate, okay, and I want to create a logic circuit, so I want to connect other gates here. The question is, how many gates I can, I can connect here at the output? How many gates? Is there a limit? Can I put any number of gates or there is a limit? Okay, for sure there is a limit. Why is there is a limit? I'm going to tell you why. Because every gate here inside it, there, there is a transistor. This transistor needs current. So here, we need some current here. We need some current here to, uh, to operate the transistors. We need some current here. We, we need some current here. However, there is an, a restriction on the total power here. So the total power, the, uh, I'm sorry, the total current, the total current you are going to take from this gate, okay, there is a restriction on this current. This current actually is going to be divided here. That's why there is a limit. Just give you any number, just to make it easy. For example, if I assume this one 10 milliampere, and here this one is 1 milliampere. So maximum I can take from this gate is 10 milliampere. Here I need 1 milliampere. What it means? It means I cannot connect you more than 10 here. Okay? That's why we have a limit, we call it fan out. So fan out means how many gates you can connect at, at the output, okay? At the output of one gate, okay? There is other parameters, you can find them in the data sheet, like power dissipation, how much power consumed by the gate. There are propagation delay, okay? That's why you are going to mention in the, in the coming, uh, coming, coming lab. Also, there is something we call it noise margin. I, I already explained it in the, in the video of the coming lab, uh, because this one is important, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain it again if there is no problem, I can explain it here. So, So this is something you are going to measure in the coming lab, guys. If you have, if you have any gate here, we use we use an inverter as an example, but you can apply the same thing for any other gate. Okay. So here in the input, as I told you, for example, if you have here five volt, so from five volt until the input high maximum. So any voltage in this range. It will be it will be considered hard or logic one by the gate. Okay. Same thing we have here from zero volt until B input low. In, uh, I'm sorry, this is minimum. So this is the minimum voltage to be hard. Okay. Minimum voltage. Anything above is okay. Here, this is the maximum voltage that's taken as logic zero. Okay. So any any voltage in this range from 5 volt until the input high minimum, okay? This is logic one. Any volt from uh, any volt from V input low maximum until zero volt is actually taken like zero. I think I don't remember the numbers, but I think you can this may be different uh, from chip to another, so you need to look at the data sheet. Okay. So for example, if this one 4 going to 4, if this one 4 going to 1, just in uh, or 1 going to 1, any numbers. That means that means if the input between 5 volt and 4.4, so this will be taken as logic one. Okay. If the input between 0, zero volt and 1.1, again, you can take the exact number from the data sheet. So it will be the input high minimum, the input low maximum. So this is logic zero. Okay. For sure, you should not work in this area because this area is undefined. You should not. These are zero one. It shouldn't be here. Okay. Um, you can try to put something here. I see. 
you, 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 what you are going to get, you are going to hit a voltage that's not zero and not one. For sure, this is a very, we don't, we don't have a situation like that because we are, this is a digital. So almost everything should be zero or one. I don't want to get a voltage that's not zero or not one. So this mistake, this error, it shouldn't happen. Anyway, so it should. Okay, guys, any questions? Same thing for the output. So for the output here, for the output we have here again from five volt until the output high minimum and also from zero volt until the output low maximum. So it means if the output in this range, so that means it is logic zero. If the output in this range, it means it is logic one. So the output is not almost five volt. Okay, so it's, it's in a range as well. Any any vote in this range is one. Any vote in this range is actually zero. Make sense? Again, you can find what is all the, the numbers, what is all the, the, the output high, what's the you can find this the Okay. Let me ask you a question. By common sense, there should be some relation between the output high minimum and the input high minimum. There should be some relation between the output low maximum and the input low maximum, or there is no relation, they are irrelevant to each other. There should be a relation. Why? Because this gate is going to be connected to another gate. So if this gate output high, the other gate has to take it high. So they have to be compatible. You got what I'm saying? The output of the gate of one gate, if, if here I output high, so it has to be in the same range. That, that is interpreted or taken as high here. If I output low, so it has to be in the same range. That's, that's why there is a relation. So usually the relation is here we have five volt and we have V input, uh, V input high minimum. So this one has to be in this in this range, right? So if you output between five volt and V output high minimum, it has to be in this range, which is inter interpreted as high. Same thing here. Also, we have a range here from zero volt to V input low maximum. Same thing. The output here has to be in this range. Otherwise, it's not going to work. They are, they are not going to be compatible. You output here high, but the next gate is, is going to take out the file. Okay? It shouldn't work in this way. That's why, yes, there is a relation. This range here has to be in this range so that when, when this gate outputs high, this one takes it high. When it outputs low, this one takes it at low. Is that okay, guys? Okay. Now, comes, it comes something here. Um, um, we call it noise margin. Noise margin. So what is noise noise margin? I'm going to tell you what it is. Look here, guys. You have a gate, and then you have another gate. Okay? Here, for example, I'm going to take it for... I'm going to take it for low, for example. But you can also apply it for high. But so here... If, if the output here is low, the maximum volt I'm gonna get is V output low maximum. Maximum volt, it can be less, but this is the maximum. If it is, if it is low, okay? For this one, to take, it, uh, to take it as low, maximum volt has to be V input low maximum. Maximum volt, okay? So this is the maximum volt and this is the maximum volt. For sure, if everything is okay, so this volt here has to be has to be less than this volt, okay? So for example, just make it easy to give you some numbers. So if this one, for example, here, you have a 1, for example, if this one 0.1, this one can be 1, 1.1, for example, okay? So the maximum here, because this is the maximum for input to be uh, to be low, this is the maximum for output to be low, so this one has to be less than this one, make sense? Okay, what is the problem with the noise? Um, there is something we call it noise. So what's noise, okay? The noise, and you will, you will understand better when you take more classes in ECE. Noise is something natural, natural. Okay, what happens is that I have a wire, this wire should be 5 volt, but when I measure it, I thought maybe I thought it is more or less. Okay, why? Because there are many reasons for the noise, because some noise is going to be added. There are many, many reasons for this noise. Okay, one, 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 one reason, one easy reason is if you have. If you have um, coil, any coil, this coil make magnetic field. And then if you have a wire, because uh, 
because of the magnetic field and the wire, so actually uh, you, you can yield electromagnetic force here, okay? So if you have a wire and you have magnetic field around it, uh, and uh, and this magnetic field can come from anywhere, even so, so, and this lenses are making magnetic, magnetic. So anyway, this is something natural. So what happens? Maybe I'm expecting here five volt, but I, I can find it more or less because the noise can be also from here. So so but but again, usually this noise is very small. Don't think that noise is going to make the five volt will make it ten volt. No no. Usually this noise in the range of milli milli volt something very small. Okay, so now we are talking about noise margin. Noise margin means, look here, uh, the idea. We agree for this for this circuit to work well, the, the output low maximum has to be less than this one. Okay, just to make sure the output here in the range of the low here. Okay, so okay, and it's actually this way. If you and I want you to go this one, you sh should see in lab number three. If you look at the numbers in the data sheet, you will see the voltage here is already nicely inside here. As far as you remember, is this, I think these are the numbers. This one is 0.1, this one 1.1. 1 .1. So it's nicely, very nicely. The output here will be taken as, as low for the input. Very nice, very good. Okay, however, because of the noise, noise may increase this one. If, if the noise, if the noise reduces this one, we don't have a problem. The problem happens, for example, here, this one 0 0.1, this one 1 0 0.1. If the voltage increases until 1.1, it's okay, but more than that, here problem happens. That's what we call noise margin. What is the margin of noise? We can tolerate. So the, the bigger the noise margin, it means it's, it's better. So this is a better. The bigger is better. That means we can tolerate bigger noise, okay? So in this, if I take some, just some numbers, this one going to one, this one going to one, just any numbers. So if if one going to one plus noise is less than one going to one, we're okay, this are or equal, we're okay. The problem happens when it's actually becomes a greater, it be greater because here the output is low, but it's gonna take in here as the input is undefined. So instead of, so now we became this area. So what happens, originally I was here because of the noise, noise jumped it up and there's a problem. And don't care, and this is the beauty of the digital system, even in communication. So uh, that's why we like it in communication. Communication, as long as, if there's a noise, as long as you are in the region of zero, you have perfect communication. You can understand? That's why digital communication can tolerate some noise. So if, if I'm here, and the new job we need to hear, as long as I'm in this range, I'm okay. The problem happens if, if I have too much noise, and then I will go outside here and become this area. So now it was zero, but it will be taken by the next gate as undefined. That's what we call noise, noise much. Anyway, so I'm not, I don't want to explain more because this will be explained, it's already explained in the coming lab. Any questions? Okay. The other thing, uh, there is just an expression. You may not need it, but uh, but you need. Uh, you 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 may not need it, but you, you no one knows. Maybe in the future, uh, when you buy a chip, you, you you can see this expression. So this is just a definition. Look here, guys. Let me do. So what I do to you guys here, if you have a kid. In the input here, for example, you have from zero volt, for example, until 1.1. 1 .1. Anything in this range, I'm gonna put uh, it's logic zero. Okay. And anything here in this range from 5 volt to 4.4 4 volt, anything here is logic one. Is, is that what I told you? Okay. So usually if I take the high volt for one, so this is the high volt for one, the so small volt, I take it for zero. Okay. Uh, most of the gates are used in this way, and this is, we call it positive logic. So most of the gates are used in this way. So in, in case of positive logic, the small voltage, I use it for logic, for logic zero, the high voltage, I use it for logic one, okay? Some, some gates are, are, are doing the opposite. So here, the high voltage, I'm gonna take it zero. 
the small voltage I'm gonna take it twice. Think about does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. I just have two cases. One case I will take it zero, one case I'm gonna take it one. That's it. You got what I'm saying? But if this is a case, for example, if you have here and here I can put five volt and five volt. Five volt means logic zero, logic zero. So the output should be zero. You got what I'm saying? I just switch it. Okay. I didn't switch the logic. Be careful here. I'm using the same logic. Okay. If one input is zero, logic zero, the output, the output is zero. I don't, I'm not gonna change the logic. I just change as a voltage, how it how explained explained is a logic. Okay. So here uh, in case of n, I told you if one input is zero logic, okay, this logic. This logic zero can be five volt, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna give five volt. If this logic zero is zero volt, so I'm gonna give zero volt, that's it, pretty simple. So sometimes we switch it, we take, we take the small voltage as one, and we take the high voltage as zero. Be careful, I'm gonna say it again. So everything I'm explaining in this course, as a logic, zero or one does not change. It's the same thing. What it changes is, when you translate from logic to voltage. So if you have, if you have a uh, net, okay, and I want to enter logic zero. This logic zero can be zero volt or can be five volt. Depending, depends on which which system we are using. We have two systems. One system, I think, and I think most of the kids are using this one, positive logic, and have another one we call it negative logic. This is a different system. In case of negative logic, low voltage. Is, is considering uh, logic one, high voltage is considered is, is, is actually logic logic zero. Okay. Anyway, so you can take from the data sheet. So when you buy a chip, you can take from the data sheet if it is using positive. I, but I think most of the chips are using positive logic. Any questions? Okay. The purpose of this section here uh, to show you, I told you, any 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 logic function I can implement it only using NAND or only using log. Okay, any logic function. How? That's what I'm going to explain in this section. It's very easy section. Okay. So before I go to the details, I just want to make a definition. Uh, we have what we call sum of product form. So any, uh, I when I write a function, this function can be in, in uh, sum of product, SOP, or we call it sum of product form, or it can be product of some form, or it can be neither, okay? So again, so now I'm just making it finish. When you write a function, this function can be in product of some, or some of some, some of product or, or something else or need okay so let's first know uh, how 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 everyone looks like so let's start with the first one you sum of product okay how this one looks like okay? some of this one here is actually if, if, if the function is written in this program i we call it this function is in some of product format okay <laughs> What do you mean by sum and what do you mean by product? We don't do sum, we don't do product. We do end, we do all. We don't have some, yeah. Uh, they, they use it, sum of product here, it means, sum, sum here means all, so sum here means all. Uh, a product means end, end, logic end. So as you see here, guys, in this format, every term, every term is using only end. And 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 then I connect all terms together using all. That's why I call it sum of product because product to product to product and this is sum of product. So if any function written in this format, I I say this function is written in sum of product format or form. So sum of product means this term only and term and 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 then I'm gonna sum them together. Sum here means all. Okay. Uh, let's look at this one here. So this term has end. This term has end. This term doesn't have anything, which is okay, still okay. 
And then I'm gonna cut ties them together using our connect them together using or 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 or. Okay. So same thing here. It can be every term here can be only one one variable, or it can be multiple variable connected only using and. Okay, so this is still in some product format. This one is not in some product format, okay, because you can see some in this term in here. We have we have some here. It shouldn't be this way, okay? I can put, I'm gonna put, I can put this one in, uh, look here. I can put this, this, the way it is written right now, it is not in some product, I can, but I can put it in some product. How? I can make distribution here. So if, so if I make distribution, it becomes A, C, D, or B, C, D, or uh, B, A, E, F. Now this one is okay. It is in, in, in some uh, sum of product. Okay. Next one here. This one is sum of product because you have and 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 all of them connected using code. So if you implement, look here, guys, to summarize what I'm saying here. If you have a function that is in some product format, how I can implement it using one or only one or. So okay. And then here I can use end, end, end. Anyone I can implement this one. So in this case here, I can use only one or, and then here end, end, and or or of our or the variable directly. Okay, it's the same thing. So, so if 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 the function is this format, for example, you have something like that, uh, a b or c d. Okay, so here I'm going to use one one. Always we have only one or. And we have multiple, multiple uh, ends. Okay, so uh, always we can implement it using this way. Okay, so for example, here, okay, guys, here we use only one. Uh, let, let me do it. So here we have only one or. Okay, but here I'm gonna have here one end for E B prime. I can have here one end for C D prime and E. I have one end here for, for A, for A, C prime, E prime. Is that okay? So again, any sum of product for man can be done this way. We have two levels, one level, one level only for end, and the other level for all. Only one or multiple end. One or multiple end. Is that okay, guys? So again, I'm saying I can put the function, any function in this format. If the function in this format we call it, just, I'm, I'm not just this definition. I, I say this function it is in some product format. Is that okay? Um, same thing here. If I put the function in this format here, or every term has all, it doesn't have any end inside every term. So this one has all, this one has all, this one has all. And they are connected together using end. End. So if I implement this one, we have only one end. We have only one end. And every term here has or, multiple ors to implement. So if it is in this format, we call it product of sum. Okay? Yeah, because this is sum, 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 and then I product is to together. Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for the confusion. We don't have here submission. We don't have product. Okay. Submission. So, again, I, I, this is as a way the textbook you are using them. But uh, submission it means or uh, product here means end. So if you have like this one as, as well. So here it can be uh, an uh, uh, complete term or it can be only one variable. Okay. So you can use, as long as you are using only one end, only one end and multiple ors. Okay, so this product of some format. Okay, so again, uh, conclusion to end this lecture. Um, to conclude here, what I'm saying now, I'm just making a definition of this function in this format, this way, which can be implemented using only one or and multiple ends. We call it this one is sum of product to format. Okay. If, if the expression in this format, so you have here all, all, all in every term, and every all of them are connected together using n, and in this case we use only one n and multiple ors, in this case we call it in the product of some format. Okay? 
it can be neither, it can be neither of them, okay? Uh, but, but anyway, but if this is here, it becomes. Uh, uh, so, this I'm going to explain next time, guys. So, this is a new point. So, now I'm saying we have product of sum, we have sum of product, okay? Next time, I'm going to show you if you have a function that is in um, sum of product, this is sum of product, I can easily implement this function only using NAND this way. Same thing. If you have a function that is a product of sum, I can implement it only using no. That's, that's what I'm going to teach this time. So if, if I can make a function in the format of product of sum, I can implement it only using no. And then after that, I'm going to explain if you have a truth table like this one, right? how can you represent the function in some product or some product of sum? So given a two table, how can you calculate a function in product of some, some product? One of them can be implemented only using name, the other one can implement only using no. Okay, anyway, so here it starts.